Super intelligence is a really interesting subject. I mean, most of us are somewhere around the midline when it comes to intelligence. Perhaps we're slightly more intelligent than average, perhaps we're slightly less. But most of us are closer to being average than to being an exception to the norm. Being super intelligent is actually very rare and very few people have an IQ above 130. That's why it's actually quite special to land yourself a membership in Mensa. Very few people are able to perform the way you do on IQ tests. You possess a brain abnormality. You think differently than other people. You process information and patterns differently than most people do. So you are a rare exception if you're super intelligent. And yeah, today's video goes out to find out whether we are super intelligent or whether we are just average. And what it means to be super intelligent and what the downsides could be of having a higher than average intelligence. The super intelligent person is a pretty interesting hypothesis. I mean, what is a super intelligent person? What does a super intelligent person look like? How do they act? I mean... If you study up on and read online on gifted individuals, you can find quite a few interesting concepts. I mean, uh, for example, these people tend to learn faster than average. This is something that goes without saying. In school, super intelligent people tend to be different because they are quicker at figuring out the right answer to a question. They can finish a book faster, they can read faster, they can process the information faster, and often they tend to outperform their peers early in school life. With super intelligent people, however, comes also a lot of other different traits. For example, a higher than average creativity. Yeah, often these people tend to be more creative than average. They tend to think of more ideas faster than most people will. They tend to see patterns quicker than other people do. So if something changes, the intelligent person is the first person to notice uh, these changes. They are quicker at understanding and spotting novelty and strange or odd or bizarre things. They often tend to possess uh, stronger conceptual intelligence or existential intelligence. They tend to be faster at... Uh, understanding and formulating a theory or a hypothesis about something. They tend to be able to explain or understand the situation from an abstract point of view. They tend to uh, show a stronger sense of vision and focus. Often they tend to have um, bigger and bolder ideas than their peers. Often they tend to appear older than what they are. At other times they can appear to be, and these are the negatives, more rebellious, more likely to question their teachers, more likely to disobey the school rules, more likely to get in detention, more likely to do drugs, more likely to uh, stay up late, more likely to yeah, do basically anything odd or alternative or outside the norm. Intelligent people tend to possess extraordinary or unusual habits and interests. They can uh, find and take an interest in things that often their peers don't care about. Uh, or they might seem completely demotivated or disinterested in uh, things other people around them find interesting. So a lot of the time they can feel disillusioned or disconnected from their peers at an early age. They can feel at school bored or demotivated by the tasks they do. They can uh, uh, be upset with their teachers and their other classmates. They can uh, find themselves feeling bored or demotivated or apathetic to school or going to school. So with all these things in mind, the intelligent people are not more likely to become successful than anyone else. If you think that being super intelligent is going to put you ahead in society, sadly you're wrong. A lot of the time it's the contrary. You might uh, find it difficult to land a consistent job. You might find it difficult to uh, stay on track in school. You might show more irregular performance. You might struggle to find and make the right connections and networks with other people. Uh, all these things can be, mean big problems later in life. And often, while intelligent people tend to do better in school at an early age, this 
thing, this trend, tends to stop and change later on in life. That means um, intelligence can eventually be outperformed by people of higher grit. Grit is interesting to compare uh, in relationship to intelligence because if intelligent people are often lazy or unlikely to stick to or be consistent in what they do, Grit people tend to be highly consistent, more organized, more structured, more obedient, better at following order and structure and rules, better at listening to teachers and superiors and to parents, more likely to stay engaged with a task even if it's boring, more likely to uh, push themselves through the last minutes of studying, or if, even if it's a lot of details and even if it's really nitty work and really tedious and you're really tired. You know, the, often the grit person is the person who shows the highest amount of discipline and follow through and structure in what they do. They are more likely to push themselves and to be like, come on, Mike, you can do it. You go there. You get this done. And this is interesting because often people of higher grit can uh, outperform people of high intelligence even in academic fields. There are people in academic fields with high grit, with high study motivation, with high focus, with high self-discipline that outperform or do better than their intelligent peers. Often uh, while grit people can struggle early in life feeling, oh, I'm slower, oh my god, everyone else is doing so much better, everyone's so faster, everyone's so much fat, smarter. Grit people tend to eventually come true and be like, I'm going to prove them, I'm going to show them, I'm going to get it done. And so what grit people learn is self-discipline and the importance of focus and the importance of staying, of going, of keeping at the task, of trying, of doing your best, even if it's hard, even if it's difficult. Now, this is a lesson you as a super intelligent person might not learn as easily. So a super intelligent person might uh, find themselves uh, feeling that they never get the challenge, the right push, the right motivation to get something done. Yeah, often what they feel is, yeah, if I was motivated, I would do it. If I was interested, I would actually to try my best but I'm never really interested in anything. I really never have anything that really gets my motivation. Nothing really feels that important. Everything feels kind of dull or repetitive after a while. So while often intelligent people tend to do better with new tasks and in new environments with new information, often if there is uh, an increased amount of repetitive tasks or after the field starts feeling familiar to you, you might start feeling it's less important. So what happens is super intelligent people can perform better early at the task but worse later on in the task. So take bowling for example. A super intelligent person might be like, oh this is easy, oh I can get a strike, oh that's pretty cool. Oh, But then like after the fifth, uh, sixth shot, after the seventh shot, uh, they start feeling like, yeah, I'm just rolling a ball, what the hell? And their mind starts getting less and less into the task and their motivation drops and they start performing worse and worse. So that's an interesting thing about super intelligence. It um, needs a lot of fuel. It needs a lot of novelty. It needs a lot of engagement to stay afloat. So often when you're super intelligent, you need to find a work or a career that can support you. A career that is going to be stimulating, complex, nuanced, varied. A, a career that will allow you freedom to go your own way. The ability to ask questions and to find alternatives. The ability to explore, try new things, make changes. A field that seems big picture, long term, futuristic and full or even endless in possibilities. Often uh, you want to aim big, you want to try to aim as big as possible because the smaller you set your mind, often the less interested you'll be in it in the longer run. So think long term and try to set up for yourself something that will feel big or something that will take a long time and try to set uh, plans as far into the future as possible and try to give yourself as much of a right to be a rebel as possible.
go your own way like don't let people tell you what to do don't let people bully you into a corner you know like uh, find that uh, freedom to go your own way and find respect from other people with super intelligence uh, through this most people are on the scale of intelligence uh, but not on the scale of super intelligence like if um, we can talk about the top 20% in intelligence. I mean, let's talk about uh, people who have an IQ of between 110 to 120, for example. This is still a fairly large amount of the population, a fair amount that, yeah, they, they have some grit, they have some intelligence, but they have a little bit more intelligence and a little bit less grit. So they are people that uh, will usually show a little bit more focus, a little bit more creativity, a little bit more curiosity than the average person, but they are not going to be extreme in this regard. You know, most intuitives overrate how intelligent they are. Most people tend to think they are more intelligent than what they are. But if you think about it from a realistic point of view, uh, most likely you are just slightly above average. You're just slightly bit, a bit more and the way you can figure this out is uh, you have to put intelligence against something. You can't say intelligence is something like a superpower. You can't say intelligence is the only thing. You can't like uh, assume it is a trait above all other traits. You have to assume some balance on the scale. You have to compare it to something. You have to compare it to, I would say, grit, uh, your amount of discipline. Be real with yourself. If you are a person that does show grit, does show focus, does show self-discipline, if you are able to show self-control, if you feel it is possible for you to abide by the norms of society and to fit in and follow the rules, if you feel that you are a person that can listen to your teachers and your peers in class and a person that can structure yourself with a fair amount of uh, ease, you're probably closer to average and then you are to super intelligence. This is not something bad. This just means that uh, you are intelligent. You do learn faster than average. You do have some creativity, but you also have some self-discipline and some self-control. You're not going to be extreme. You're not going to vastly outperform your peers. You're not going to be finished with a book or a task faster than everyone else. You're not going to sit bored waiting for everyone else to finish up. You're going to be there a little bit faster than everyone else. And then you're going to be able to sit down for five minutes and then everybody else will come out and reach the same conclusion you did. So these things can be annoying. They can be tedious. They can be difficult. You know, if you feel that, yeah, I'm uh, having to wait a little bit and oh, people are a little bit slower and oh, I have to explain myself to other people. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, but often with super intelligent people, what you see is a uh, uh, much higher level of frustration, uh, feeling that you can never explain yourself to other people, a feeling that you're always misunderstood, a feeling that uh, people never get it, a feeling that your uh, teachers are stupid, that the rules you follow are pointless, the feeling that uh, uh, you don't know what you're doing, the feeling that uh, you're constantly sitting around waiting for everyone else and nothing ever happens and you never you never get a chance to enjoy yourself often the super intelligent are on a range that is extreme you know they're struggling with something they are uh, really uh, in a difficult situation because of their intelligence they're so intelligent their intelligence has become a problem in their life i mean the biggest problem if at all is lack of motivation a lot of these time, a lot of these types, they struggle with uh, depression, or they struggle with the feeling of worthlessness or uselessness. The feeling that oh, nothing makes a difference, nothing has any point. There is no uh, point to anything. Yeah, everything is boring. I don't want to have work. I don't want to get into a relationship. It's all just too much work and too much effort and often there's the feeling that you don't have any grit, you don't have any motivation, you don't have any follow through. You start up ideas, sure, and you have lots of ideas, and in the beginning you're really curious and really enthusiastic, but 
a lot of the time you're just kind of burdened by it all and you're like following uh, loose trails that you never see true to the end so a lot of time you feel oh i've never really amounted to anything i've never really accomplished anything i've never really done anything it's just been project 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 it's just been idea 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 when will i ever do something real when will i ever succeed in anything so often people that score higher than average on intelligence but who stay away from the extreme they are people that feel this to an agreeing degree and can relate a little bit and say yeah yeah sometimes yeah that's definitely true to me but other times they have times where they like they feel really proud of themselves they feel accomplished they feel wow i did something and oh wow i made this idea happen and wow this project became a huge success or they have they find uh, like these moments they find this career that they can be curious about for five years and get really into and yeah the thing is just uh, the extent and the thing is also just uh, the lack of a diagnosis a lot of the time uh, the averagely intelligent remain undiagnosed uh, while the people of super intelligence they often appear to be in some degrees handicapped socially or perhaps they struggle to fit in or perhaps they are bullied or perhaps they're outsiders perhaps they uh, are rule breakers perhaps they uh, uh, escape the law or they get uh, caught cheating on tests or they get caught running and escaping in between the lines you know a lot of time they they are the people that get diagnosed for their differences while the people of average intelligence they run between the lines i mean sometimes they do things we don't expect them of people in social situations sometimes they have their quirks and the weird eccentricities sometimes they have these uh things they like sometimes they break the rules or sheet or something but most of the time they get away with it and they can do it without a problem people don't even think anything of it and the next day it's forgotten a lot of the time you know you have these people that run between the gray lines so when you're of average intelligence like uh, a slightly higher intelligence than average what happens is uh, you can fit in you can if you want to you can adjust if you want to you can follow the rules if you need to you can adjust but often the person who is super intelligent feels they can't i can't fit in it's impossible for me i don't know how people tell me to but how do i do it how do i relate to other people how do i build a bond how do i have a normal conversation with other people without looking like a total weirdo how do i uh, uh, like stick to the rules how do I manage to do it They're like they, they feel in their heads that they just cannot do it they cannot put through it the, the effort it's not there the grit is completely missing or almost missing so with that in mind I hope this video made you understand super intelligence a little bit better and hopefully it made you want it a little bit less and hopefully it made you also understand the other side of intelligence a bit better grit the importance of grit the importance of follow through the importance of discipline focus attention i mean attention is something i completely forgot to mention attention being able to listen to your peers being able to pay attention in class being able to focus on other people a lot of the time people of super intelligence they struggle to listen to and hear other people around them. Other people might try to talk to them, but often they are gone in their own world or they are completely inattentive or oblivious. They stare outside the window in class. They don't hear anybody. They try, but they can't bring themselves to listen to other people. They can't bring themselves to hear other people. It's just so hard for them to muster that attention to other people because they are so, their mind is just so vast. Uh, they can only hear what is inside their mind and they can't hear what's outside of it anyways that's super intelligence for you uh, are you super intelligent or are you somewhere in between the lines where do you feel you fall on the scale of intelligence and grit and uh, what do you think about the topic of intelligence thanks for watching this video and see you all in the next one